turn the corner, but as you can see from Chopper 5, they are not out of the woods by any stretch. This was the view of huge flames and a lot of smoke rising from the Oakmont area of Sonoma County less than 60 minutes ago. The Oakmont fire first flared up in yesterday's winds. It's burning just east of Santa Rosa near Highway 12 so far. It has charred more than 500 acres. It is just 15% contained. Earlier today, we spotted this flare up near the St. Francis Winery in Santa Rosa. Because of the steep terrain, firefighters have been tackling the flames mostly from the air, but they've also been doing controlled burns to try to stop the fire from spreading south to nearby homes. In all, the wine country fires have left at least 40 people dead. But tonight, more of the missing have been found safe. That number now stands at 174. The fires have burned more than 217,000 acres since they broke out last Sunday night. And they've destroyed at least 5,700 structures. Cal Fire officials said today many people who were forced to evacuate will soon be able to go back home, but they'll have to be patient. Over the next 24 hours, you will see a lot of repopulation plans coming out. It's very important for us to phase those repopulations in appropriately at different times throughout the day so that we don't have a mad rush to all go in and repopulate and cause traffic congestion and safety issues for the public. A look now at the latest containment numbers. The Nuns Fire is now 25% contained. The Pocket Fire also at 25% containment. Evacuation orders for Healdsburg were lifted an hour ago. And further south, the Atlas Fire is 56% contained, and the neighboring Tubbs Fire is now 60% contained. So far, the Tubbs Fire has burned more than 35,000 acres in Napa County between Calistoga and Santa Rosa. It broke out late last Sunday night. Yeah, when that Tubbs fire did break out. It spread so fast that Berkeley firefighters were called in to help. They took this video in the pre-dawn hours of Monday morning. On the outskirts of Santa Rosa, they could see the glow of the fire from within the city itself. They thought they would be helping to fight a big grass fire. Then they quickly realized it was much more. They drove by a Kmart that was fully engulfed, decided there was no chance that they could save the 100,000 square foot building. And as they kept driving, they saw more and more buildings on fire, including that gas station. And finally, they arrived at Coffee Park, where everything had been burning since 3 a.m. Now, one week later, we are getting an exclusive view of the devastation in Coffee Park from Sky Drone 5. Yeah, block after block after block, all destroyed. KPX 5's Kit Doe shows us. Kit. Yeah, we are live in the heart of the burn area here in Coffee Park. Surrounding us is 200 acres of uh, destruction. The sights, the sounds, the smell of it is uh, quite overwhelming. We've seen uh, PG&E crews, dozens of them working all day long to restore power and uh, gas service out here. Uh, they do not have an estimated time of when that will be done. Officially, this area is not yet open to residents, but we did find one family who managed to make their way in. For the past week, drones have been prohibited from flying above one of the hardest hit neighborhoods in Santa Rosa. Banned, that is, until today. KPIX 5 got special permission to fly over Coffee Park, where Sky Drone 5 shows us the devastation stretching all the way to the horizon. We spent the day driving and mapping the perimeter of the burn houses, which is nearly three miles all the way around. The massive burn area encompasses about 200 acres of a densely populated neighborhood on Santa Rosa's northwest side. All told, that's 28. Hundred homes. I just can't believe it, you know, that uh, my house will, will, will look like that. 85 year old Joe Razo was one of the first homeowners allowed back in. The fire had knocked out the power, so his children had to manually open the garage door and hold it up while they backed out the car and evacuated. The house was one of the closest to the advancing flames and was likely one of the first to go. Joe had lived at 1901 Pine Meadows Drive for 35 years. How are you going to go on with life now? I don't know. I'm going to just live day by day. Today, the family is on the hunt for diamond earrings, coins, pottery, anything that may have survived the intense heat. Joe's wife is suffering from dementia and is near the end of her life. Part of her ceramic angel collection made it. What does it tell you that these angels survived? There's hope, and we'll be moving on. And when she does go, 
um, should be looking out after us. There are stories of everyday heroes everywhere. Chuck Frampton, seen here using a borrowed fire hose, stayed behind to save his and his neighbors' homes near Tohe Drive on the southern end of the burn area. Neighbors now take turns patrolling for, of all things, looters. He says they recently stopped a pair of men from making off with a gun safe. What's your message to anybody coming in here thinking about looting? Don't do it. Let people go through their stuff. Let people have their things, what they've got left. And everywhere you look here, you see signs of a family life in this neighborhood. You got a burned pumpkin here, a sign that uh, they were getting ready for Halloween. Uh, to give you some sense of how intense these flames are, look at this. Uh, I'm not even sure what this is. It's a piece of glass, but completely melted at this point. Uh, right now, the neighborhood not yet open up to uh, the victims, so no timeline on, the, on when that will happen. Back to you. It kept my house burned down about a year and a half ago, and it's a shock. And I can't imagine that on top of the shock, people would actually think of looting in the wake of something like that. But that aside, um, is there, is there, uh, are there insurance agents that are beginning to come in and assess the damage, or is it not at that point yet? Yeah, so uh, all along the perimeter here, we're seeing uh, heavily armed uh, military police from the National Guard. They are watching over the roadblocks. They're checking IDs to make sure that anybody who's in here is supposed to be here. And yes, we have seen some insurance agents uh, milling about along with the media and the PG&E crews. Boy, but wait until that process begins. Believe me, you begin to learn a lot of things you wish you never had to learn. It's a process. Well, I hope they get it back together. That's awful devastation. Kit, thanks very much.